Okay. Uh, uh, before we begin the the, uh, the the panel's presentation, there is a, a short video uh, on journey of uh, IUM IUM Penawa. Uh, maybe the the technical staff can play the video. Okay, uh, okay, let's uh, start the uh, session. Uh, let's begin with uh, Dr. Nozaliza. Uh, Dr. Zaliza, can you share with us a little bit about the research collaboration uh, on learning disabilities children from KICT IOM uh, perspective? Okay, thank you, Brother Ayo, for inviting me to share a little bit on the uh, research collaboration between IIUM, basically KICT itself, Korea of Information and Communication Technology, IIUM, with uh, Penawa Hospital, uh, and, uh, uh, with Penawa Hospital, which is to be specific with the Penawa Special Learning Center. Okay, so let me share my screen first. Before we start, okay, I would like to welcome everyone to this Takrim 2021. So today, inshallah, alhamdulillah, mashallah, tabarakallah, we have the opportunity to share with you uh, the collaboration, research collaboration between International Islamic University Malaysia and Hospital Penawa, okay? So, uh, as for your information, um, IIUM here is uh, has been re representative represented by the uh, Kuliah of Information and Communication Technology KICT. Uh, as you can see, as IIUM members, you can see there is the only Kuliah at, at the top of the hills. Okay, so we can uh, you can visit us there. Okay, inshallah, and also we have the Penawa Special Learning Center. Okay, Penawa Special Learning Center. This is under Hospital Penawa. But basically, the MOA is between IIUM and also Penawa. But under that, we have Kuliah of ICT and also Penawa Special Learning Center. So, uh, our research uh, collaboration is basically for the uh, learning disability children. Okay? So, perhaps later, Ms. Ruina will explain more why we are choosing this uh, research collaboration uh, for the learning disability uh, children. Okay, 
So, uh, a little bit uh, history on how we start the collaboration actually. So, uh, in May 2019, okay, we have the first visit to Hospital Penawa at Pasir Gudang, Johor. Okay, lead by me, myself, uh, Dr. Zaliza Magno. Okay, so we have the, also we have the data collection at PSLC Pasir Gudang. PSLC is then for Penawa Special Learning Center, Pasir Gudang. So uh, during this first visit, we we are we are first time meeting the uh, the, the the director of the hospital Penawa, which is uh, Dr Adnan, Dr Adnan Muhammad, uh, Dr Adnan Sulaiman is one, and also Miss Ruina. Okay, so this is the two person that we are meeting during that time to actually uh, to to let them know that we are actually wanted to to have a collaboration in terms of the declaration in terms of research and in terms of uh, anything that we can collaborate uh, between each other and then we have also the second visit to hospital penawa again in september 2019 this is led by professor dr abdul wahab bin abdul rahman so this one is former he is former dean of kict during that time okay so we have here uh, the uh, the professor of prof of prof abdul dr abdul wahab abdul rahman and also we have haji wan if you, if you still remember him right in the kict i think for kict uh, kict staff they are familiar with haji wan okay so throughout this uh, meeting we have uh, we have achieved one uh, one one um, MOA MOA between IIUM and also uh, Penawa Hospital. Okay. So I would like to introduce you uh, IIUM team members that has been uh, uh, involved in this particular project or research uh, collaboration. So first we have Professor Dr Abdul Wahab Abdul Rahman. He is the advisor of IUM Penawa MOA KICT, okay? And then we have also me myself, Dr. Zaliza, Nur Zaliza Magnor, focal person of MOA, and also head of IUM Penawa MySlab KICT. We have Dr. Nur Azura Zakaria, head of IUM Penawa BrainNet KICT, and then uh, from KICT, I mean from KICT, okay. Dr. Muna Azudin, head of IAM Penawa Dyslexia Lab. Uh, she is also from DIS KICT. Dr. Azura is from DCS. Uh, DCS is Department of Computer Science. DIS is Dep Department of Information System. Okay, we have also a uh, few members that are involved since beginning of the uh, research collaboration. We have Dr. Mazna Ahmad from DCS. Uh, Dr. Nur Hafiza Mahri, Dr. Siti Asma, Dr. Nur Liana, okay, and then we have Dr. Marini, Dr. Suryani uh, Sulaiman, and also Dr. Mariam Adawiyah binti, binti Zulkifli. She is from the uh, psychology department, uh, Kuliah of IRKHS. Okay. Uh, this one is Penawa team members. Okay, we have Dr. Muhammad Adnan Sulaiman, uh, founder and chairman of the Hospital Penawa Pasir Gudang Johor. Oh. Uh, and then also we have the. Let me mute this one. How to mute? Okay, so Miss Ruina Abdul Karim, so head clinical therapist uh, at Hospital Penawa Pasir Gudang Johor. Okay, so this is the both uh, two person that we are met uh, first time even until now we are dealing with them regarding this research collaboration. Okay, so and then we have also the partnership action plan since 2019-2024. Okay, so we have first is the data collection for learning disabilities research work. So, uh, as you can see here, this one is the uh, data collection uh, setup uh, which has been set up in the MindSlab uh, Penawa Special Learning Center Taman Melawati uh, KL, Kuala Lumpur. Okay. So, and then this one also, the second one is the the second one is the training and education about learning disabilities. So this one is the, we have a sharing session with Miss Ruina last time with, uh, when we have open day at Penawa Special Learning Center, uh, Taman Melawati KL. And then we have also the third one, development of interactive multimedia application for children, uh, for dyslexia children. This one is the app that has been developed by Dr. Mona Tim uh, under uh, under Dr. Mona Tim Mari membaca. 
and we also provide the pre-screening and last but not least we develop uh, we do the development of assessment for learning disabilities web-based application which has been uh, uh, lead by Dr. Azura Zakaria okay so uh, basically we have three main project okay first is mind slap and second is brain net and third is dyslexia lab okay basically this one is i bit the collaboration between iium and also uh, penawa hospital okay so i will uh, explain a little bit only a uh, surface uh, on what is iium penawa mind lab what is dyslexia lab what is the brain net okay because another speaker uh, later will explain further about this uh, lab okay so uh, in my lab, I am Penawa my lab. We have brain signals through EEG machine. So uh, we collect the data using the EEG machine, which produce the brain signals. So from this brain signal, we do the analysis of the data, and only then we produce a result whether this particular patient is having dyslexia, uh, autism, or ADHD. Okay, and then we have the data collection here. Okay, we have the data collection here. So, uh, in this data collection, uh, we did uh, some data collection at the uh, PSLC, uh, PSLC Taman Melawati KL. And then this one is the setup as I shown just now. And this one is the signage that has been, uh, we, have, we have in the PSLC Taman Melawati KL. Okay. Alright, that's a little bit about the IM Penawa Mindset. I will talk about it later. More. Okay. So, and then next we have IIM Penawa Brain Net, okay. For the IIM Penawa Brain Net, we call it as Assessment and Management of Learning Disability Web-Based System, okay. So, in this Brain Net, we have the Learning Disability Assessment, Therapy Plan, Progress Report, PSLC Branch Monitoring, EEG, and also Dyscalculia and Dyslexia. So, basically, this Brain Net is one-stop center that will gather all the information about the patient so easy for the uh, therapists or doctors wanted to uh, refer uh, what type of the uh, what type of symptom from this particular patient okay so uh, this one is for the EEG so for example we have MCHAT, DSM-5, Denver, SSP, EEG and then action plan Alright, and then we have also for this one is for the dyslexia, dyslexia, dyscalculia, and also we have the MCHAT, DSM-5, and SSP. Okay, so, so, the last but not least, we have the IIUM Penawa Dyslexia Lab. Okay, so IIUM Penawa Dyslexia Lab is basically to cater the intervention of the dyslexia patient. Okay, so Dr. Muna and team has been responsible to develop the Mari Membaca uh, apps, okay, that has been used in this uh, center or in this uh, PSLC under Dyslexia Lab to ensure that this student has the, uh, has the ability to learn uh, about the reading, okay, this phonic, menulis, mengeja, membaca and activity. So, sorry, it is in, in Malay, okay. So this one is one of the activity that has been done during the uh, activity that has been done under Penawas I am Penawa Dyslexia Lab. Okay. So uh, this is going to be my last last slides. Okay. So other activities that has been done under this research collaboration is one we have Johor Autism Summit 2020. We call it JAS. Okay. Uh, and then we second we have just tour to UIN Jakarta, uh, Universitas Muhammadiyah Jakarta, and also Fakultas Psikologi Universitas uh, Sumatera Utara. Okay, and third we have the certification for teachers collaboration with COIT. Okay, the the certificate uh, has been uh, it is still in the progress. Okay. And then fourth, we have the visit for, for Penawa Hospital Server at TM Core Data Center, Johor, right? And then five, we have IAP students at Penawa Special Learning Center. This one is the internship student that is going to be uh, to work uh, doing their internship at Penawa Special Learning Center. 
And finally, we have the final year project that has been collaborated with the uh, uh, industry, basically uh, per special, uh, Penawar Special Learning Centre to develop uh, their project or finish their project of FYP1 and also FYP2. Okay, so uh, Brother Ayub, that is basically what is the research uh, research collaboration between IIUM and also the uh, Penawar Special Learning Center. Okay, thank you, Brother Ayub. Okay, thank you, Dr. Zadiza. Uh, great introduction uh, to the uh, research collaboration by TICT IIUM. Uh, perhaps we might want to know more about who is Penawa Hospital and we focus our attention to Miss Ruina. Miss Ruina, are you there? Miss Ruina? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. All right. <laughs> uh, welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, uh, Miss Ruina, yeah. uh, could you please introduce a, a little bit uh, to uh, who is Penawa Hospital and Penawa Special Learning Center? And uh, perhaps we, want, we might want to share why does this research collaboration focus mm -hmm. on learning disabilities, children? Yeah, sure. Yes. You have my slide? Uh, yeah. Hold on. Yes. This one? Yes. All That's right. right. So thank you so much. So, Assalamu alaikum to everyone. So my name is Ruina Abdul Karim. I'm the clinical therapist in Penawa Special Learning Center. So today I'm going to introduce a little bit about what is a hospital, what is Hospital Penawa and Penawa Special Learning Center. So Hospital Penawa actually is a private hospital which is developed or oh, yes, developed by uh, Dr. Adnan Sulaiman for past 25 years. Okay. And uh, Hospital Penawa is, uh, they have a polyclinic, 41 polyclinic here based in uh, Johor. And we also have um, run running for COVID station test. And we also running for PPV um, for Pumbrian vaccine. So for now, we are so pack with all the schedule because of this pandemic and I think uh, Hospital Penawa is very um, is a very active in terms of serving uh, community with all the medical services okay and um, can we go for the next slide yes so this is Penawa Special Learning Center Penawa Special Learning Center actually also developed by uh, Dr. Adnan Sulaiman as a director of Hospital Penawa. And until now, Penawa Special Learning Center uh, is, we have almost 11 branches uh, in Kuantan, in Melaka, in Kuala Lumpur, also in Johor Baru. So what is Penawa Special Learning Center? Actually, Penawa Special Learning Center, we are give a treatment or treating patient with learning disability. Okay, so patients such as autism, ADHD, dyslexia, or uh, Down syndrome, mental retardation. So we are serving them with all the therapy. So in Penawa Special Learning Center, we are having uh, occupational therapies, we um, physiotherapists, psychology, speech therapists, and also hypotherapies. Okay, and uh, we are looking forward to open up more branches after this. But uh, due to this situation, so we have to hold on a little bit. Yeah, and next. So um, this is um, why we focus on uh, learning disability research. I think all of us aware what is happened now. Autism or learning disability is the major problem in, in our world today because autism spectrum disorder is getting more day by day but as you know that 
autism spectrum disorder or kids with learning disability, we don't have any medication or we don't have any medicine to give them to make the, all the disorder disappear. So therapy is the best solution to help patients with autism, with ADHD or with dyslexic. Okay, so this, this study uh, I found uh, by Dr. Stephanie, okay, she said that by 2025, one in 68 children has been identified with autism. But this study has been taken out from the YouTube because we are very, I think, because we don't have a uh, very good preparation in terms of how to manage patients with autism or with kids with learning disability. So that's why um, I propose to discuss with Dr. Adnan Sulaiman, why don't we open up a therapy center to help patients with uh, autism or with learning disability. So until now, PSLC or Punawa Special Learning Center we have 7,550 patients with learning disability. Okay, so can we go for the next slide? Okay, uh, I think most of you uh, know Dr. Sazlina Kamaruzaman. So she is a senior lecturer at UKM, in UKM University. So she is doing study to get the prevalence autism in Malaysia because until now we don't have the actual statistic what is going on in Malaysia related to learning disability. So she is running the study, doing the study to, to get the actual number. So that's how it's important, how important us to serve or to help patients with learning disability in our country. Okay, so next. Okay, this is uh, the report for Bilangan Murid Berkeperluan Khas Mengikut Sekolah dan juga Program Pendidikan Khas 2019. So actually the data, I got it from Datuk Yasmin from Putrajaya. So this is the actual number that we have. But however, she said to me that uh, we have more actually that not registered under uh, Kementerian. So it's triple from the actual number, okay? So can we go for the next? Uh, this is the Bilangan Sekolah mengikut, keper, uh, mengikut Program Berdasarkan Negeri 2019. So this is the total school, uh, PPKI. Uh, PPKI stand for Pelajar Berkeperluan Khas, okay? 6,397. So this is how uh, how many school that we have in Malaysia that serve kids with learning disability? Okay, for next. Okay, this is what uh, I mentioned before that this is uh, the patient registered at the SLC until 30 of June 2021. 7550 this is the only number that we have in pslc i think we have more outside there but because of the the awareness is not there or the denial of the parents is still there so they don't come for for the treatment or for the therapy so we don't have the actual number but until now this is what what i have for pslc okay and autism is the most, um, the major problem here in PSLC. So this is the, the, the patient, my patient from two years until now. Okay. I believe that awareness without action is worthless. All people, uh, so many people know about what is autism, what is learning disability all about, but what we can do to help people or to help kids with autism or with learning disability. So this is what um, we are uh, helping people to, to help them 
uh, to get the maximum independent in their life. Because as you know that autism or learning disability is a lifelong condition. So it will not recover 100%. Therapy will help until 80%. Yeah. But research agreed that therapy is the best um, treatment to help patients with autism or with learning disability. Yeah. So I think um, I think this is why um, one of the reasons why I'm focused so much on learning disability. And I'm very grateful to have uh, Dr. Zaliza, Dr. Azura, and Dr. Muna, also Prof. Wahab, to help me to find out the best solution, what I can do to help my, my patient. Because um, in a clinical setting, uh, especially in uh, therapy area, we are using traditional method. So when I met these three people, these the four, include uh, Prof. Wahab, I think it's very, very helpful. I, I found so many um, decisions, so many um, uh, answer for the question that I've in my mind for a long time. Okay. So I hope it's help. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you, uh, Miss uh, Rina. Yeah. Um, I, I, feel, uh, I feel very grateful because uh, to, to, to know that there's a team of people who are devoting themselves for great cause. This is, this is very uh, important. This is uh, very, uh, you know, the, the, the contribution is very big. Uh, I couldn't feel even ever more grateful. Um, okay, let's uh, continue now with the... Uh, hold on, what's this? Okay, the next uh, uh, sessions, uh, question. Uh, let's get back to Dr. Nazaliza. Uh, Dr. Zaliza. Um, as we know, IIUM Penawa Minds Lab is one of the labs that has been used to identify the early detection of learning disabilities children. Can you explain more about this IIUM Penawa Minds Lab? Okay, thank you, Brother Ayub. Okay, Alhamdulillah, uh, inshallah. Uh, I will uh, tell more about what is IIUM Penawa Minds Lab. Okay, so basically, IIUM Penawa Minds Lab is one of the uh, research lab that has been developed uh, to identify the um, early detection, to identify the early detection uh, for learning disability children. Okay, so it has been launched. This IIM Panawa has Minds Lab has been launched in February 2021. Okay, so uh, basically, uh, this research uh, lab uh, is under PCBDG uh, research unit, or we call it as Pervasive Computing Brain Development Group Research Unit 2 at Kulia of ICT uh, IIUM uh, Gombak. Okay. So uh, actually before we have a thorough discussion with uh, Dr. Adnan, we have to uh, present to him what is uh, research that we have been done uh, previously for almost uh, more than 10 years. I believe that uh, because uh, we have done a research study on autism, ADHD, dyslexia, which is led by uh, Professor Dr. Abdul Wahab Abdul Rahman since 2008 through PCBDG Research Unit. Okay, so uh, one of the research uh, research study that we are doing is early detection uh, for learning disability children. Okay, so I am my lab. Uh, uh, in I am my lab, we do the uh, data collection or uh, uh, EEG assessment for the learning disability kids and also normal kids. So anyone who wanted to uh, do kind of early detection for to know either their kids had or their children have the problem in either ADHD, dyslexia or autism. So they can come to the uh, Minds Lab, IOM Penawa Minds Lab. So we'll do the EEG assessment. So how we conduct the EEG assessment? Basically, we are doing the data collection using EEG uh, EEG machine. 
So this EEG machine will derive or will 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 come up with the EEG uh, or, or will come up with the brain signal. Okay, do, through the brain signal, we do the analysis of the data, and finally we come up with the result that will identify this type of patient. Okay. So there is some protocol that involved in this uh, data collection. So to ensure that uh, this particular uh, result is really valid to be used for the uh, final result. Okay. So uh, of some of the data collection uh, or the uh, the protocol that involved is one of them is the um, eyes closed and eyes open for the resting state, and then we do the um uh, we do the what we call is as the uh, clinching hand clinching hand to do the um to the to do to detect the mo fine motor movement and also the final one we do the matching game to do to in to detect the memory test okay so uh, there are few few protocol that involved in this uh, in this particular uh, data collection so if let's say uh uh, any one of you wanted to do data uh, to do early detection for your kids you can come to us at the mind lab uh, i am penawa mind lab at uh, pslc penawa special learning center uh, taman melawati kuala lumpur okay so you are welcome so uh, that's basically about the iium penawa mind lab brother ayub thank you so much right thank you dr zaliza uh, it's also sound uh, very advanced uh, Dr. Noor Azura, uh, are you there? Okay. Uh, yes, perhaps uh, in terms of systems, uh, could you please explain further on this IIUM Penawa Brain Net and uh, what are the processes taken to produce the system? Okay. Um, all right. So, um, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Brother Ayub, uh, first of all, I would like to um, uh, express or record my appreciation to Dr. Zaliza, uh, the um, head or coordinator of uh, PCBDG Research Unit can, in KICT, for inviting me to share uh, this uh, experience of uh, doing collaboration and also uh, do activities with, uh, I, uh, with Penawa or PSLC uh, for this brand net. All right, so what is brain net actually? All right, sounds um, sophisticated, right? All right, so basically this brain net, uh, the name of the brain net actually is the idea from the CEO uh, itself, yeah, Dr. Adenine. So basically uh, we have um, full, uh, all the systems, yeah, all the system uh, that has been used in PSLC that we have developed actually, and uh, uh, will be used in future in PSLC. So we pull all these systems in the brain net. All right, so there are a collection of uh, modules uh, inside this uh, brain net uh, system. All right, um, uh, so um, one of the modules um, that has been developed and has been used until now is uh, called as Learning Disability Assessment or LEDAS. Yeah, the short form is LEDAS. So uh, inside this uh, module, Learning Disability Assessment, uh, we have developed four sub-modules. Uh, which is uh, m -chart, um, uh, stands for Modified uh, Checklist for Autism in Toddlers. So basically, this survey is for autism screening. And then we have uh, another one, which is DSM-5, uh, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorder, uh, Denver uh, for Developmental Screening, and also the SSP, uh, the Short Sensory Profile. Yeah, so these four modules basically is requested Okay, by Rina uh, to, uh, to, 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 to have uh, this kind of system yeah, to automate actually this uh, manual survey to a web-based uh, system. All right, so basically these four modules, um, um, the purpose is to assess uh, comprehensively on the patient's uh, behavior, uh, sensory uh, development condition and others. So Rina, you can uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Eh? Um, the, the expert is Rina, so I'm just from the system uh, side. All right, so um, uh, this assessment is um, important because we want to determine any disorder uh, to the patient so that a proper treatment, um, medical treatment can be determined to the patient. All right, 
So as I mentioned just now that uh, these uh, four um, assessment basically is a uh, worldwide uh, use, yeah, uh, well known and is worldwide use. So we just uh, automate this uh, assessment survey into a web-based system. So what happened in the manual approach before this, the traditional approach, the parents uh, who, uh, who has um, uh, do um, uh, reservation um, uh, to, to, to do the screening, yeah? So the parents will go to the BSLC, the parents need to fill up the survey. So the survey, uh, the parents need to take about 15 to 20 minutes to fill up the survey. It's not um, a short survey, yeah? it's not a short assessment survey. It's quite a lengthy uh, survey. Um, for example, uh, in NCHAT, it has uh, about 20 questions. Uh, for the SSP itself, it has uh, more, uh, more than 30, it's almost 40 questions. Yeah? So it takes about 15 to 20 minutes or even longer than that. All right, for the parents to fill up the survey. And after that, once the uh, survey is completed, then the therapists need to calculate this, uh, the, 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 the complete survey manually. And this also takes time uh, for the therapist yeah, to determine um, uh, the, the calculation is required because they want to determine the category. Yeah? For example, in MCHI, it has uh, several categories. For example, uh, mild, uh, medium, and also high risk um, autism. All right. Uh, so this this um, uh, process basically is time consuming, uh, tedious, and uh, I remember that uh, Rowena once informed me uh, that uh, it's really tiring yeah, uh, to do the assessment manually, and it's very time consuming. So uh, basically, when we launch uh, this uh, system, uh, Leda system, uh, she's very uh, grateful um, uh, because it really helps the therapist. Right. So basically, uh, the, the, the main users for this system uh, is parents and also the therapist. Yeah? So the parents who already uh, book uh, for a screening slot uh, or met an appointment, yeah? uh, uh, the, 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 the staff uh, of the PSLC will give the manual how to use the system, how to uh, fill up the survey and so on. All right. So the parents actually need to key in all the kids and uh, their information um, and also uh, fill up the assessment survey. All right. The parents basically can view the results of the assessment. All right. So before they go to the uh, before they go and see the therapist, yeah. So they um, they they have done this assessment. Uh, prior to the uh, appointment, right? So it's um, take um, uh, less time um, uh, to do the, the, the screening and then uh, not a time consuming eh? because uh, in PSLC, there are lots of patients that book for an appointment. So um, uh, to, short, to shorten the time, yeah? Uh, so it's um, a good way to have this system because the parents can uh, fill up the survey prior to their appointment, all right? So during the appointment, the therapist will print out uh, the, the, the results, the MCHAP results and also the SSP results, and then uh, do the observation, interview with the parents, yeah? Um, uh, and after that, um, determine what kind of uh, suitable or appropriate ther uh, therapy that uh, should be given to the kids, all right? All right, so that one is on the LEDAS. We uh, also have developed uh, another module, uh, which we call it as a therapy plan module. All right, so this one uh, has been completed last month, Alhamdulillah, and already deployed in the um, uh, Penawa server, yeah, web server, and also the database server. Uh, so um, in terms of the alpha, uh, alpha testing, it has been done uh, in the, from the programmer side. So now it's uh, time for the therapist to test the system. And if there is any uh, changes or any improvement that need to be done, then the therapist can um, uh, basically inform us, uh, then we can do or, uh, the, the, the improvement, yeah, the changes and so on. So basically what is the therapy module? The therapy module uh, basically is uh, to assist the uh, therapist in, um, uh, in providing uh, uh, treatments. Uh, therapy treatments yeah, uh, for each of the patients. So just imagine that uh, just now Rina mentioned that there are uh, almost 8,000 patients in PSLC. Yeah? And Rina needs to approve one by one uh, the, uh, the, the, the therapy plan. So uh, at this moment, uh, the, the process is uh, 
uh, the approval is based on the WhatsApp, yeah, Rina? Uh, based on the WhatsApp, uh, WhatsApp. so the therapy um, uh, from the PSLC will um, inform Rina from the WhatsApp and then Rina will approve or not approve uh, or any improvement that need to be done is um, uh, make it in the WhatsApp uh, communication, yeah, in WhatsApp platform. Yeah. All yeah. right. <laughs> yes. All right. Okay, so um, to assist this process, we, we develop this uh, kind of system so that uh, Ruina can, because they have uh, 11 branches, yeah, 11 branches all over Malaysia. So Ruina needs to monitor all the branches and all the therapy, therapy plan as well. So in, uh, in terms of um, 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 uh, helps the therapies uh, and also the head, head of therapies, so we suggested this uh, therapy plan module as well uh, in the brand net system. All right. So other modules are in the pipeline that are in uh, uh, that will be developed. Yeah. Uh, the first one is the progress report. So basically, this one, the progress report, um, uh, in progress, in progress. Yeah. So uh, this one basically, uh, we want to um, make a system, a one-stop center for the therapists and also for the parents. So the parents uh, can know what are the activities. Um, uh, uh, that the, their kids doing uh, every day, yeah. So the therapist can uh, basically uh, submit all the activities, the pictures, yeah, the videos that uh, that that has been uh, captured during uh, the kids uh, activity in PSLC and store it inside the uh, progress report, all right. And then uh, the next another uh, module is the PSLC branch monitoring. So as I uh, mentioned just now that. Uh, PSLC, they have uh, about um, 11 uh, branches. Yeah, uh, so we need to um, monitor in terms of the uh, therapy plan, yeah, the, the therapies in the PSLC itself, uh, and so on. So uh, um, I'm thinking of uh, having this kind of uh, monitoring uh, module. And then uh, another one is the EEG or profiling. So all um, uh, EEG results, yeah, uh, will be stored later inside this uh, brand net system because later on in future um, we will do the profiling, uh, uh, profiling um, a process yeah for each of the kids so we know the the, the progress uh, from day one they 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 entered PSLC until they completed the treatment and so on right and then uh, the last but not least module is the dyslexia and dyscalculia so this one also in terms of the uh, assessment and also progress uh, when they take the uh, module, uh, the, the dyslexia modules, right? The ASAS Mombacha, the Dr. Zariza mentioned just now. All right, so basically the brain net uh, assists both parents and also the therapist. So what process taken to produce the system? Yeah. So basically uh, this one, uh, the, the, the uh, pre-communication is between, uh, the, uh, between Dr. Zariza and also Ruina. Yeah, so Ruina basically requested to have this uh, module, uh, four modules, uh, let us module, all right, uh, and then uh, Dr. Zaliza approached me uh, and asked whether uh, the, the FYP students can do or not uh, for this system. So I said that uh, this is actually a good opportunity because we have a collaboration with the industry and the student also um, will develop a system that actually usable uh, to the therapist and also the uh, parents, uh, the community. Yeah? Um, and also the student uh, can learn uh, uh, or apply the, their knowledge, yeah, especially in the software engineering, uh, the programming, uh, database, and so on, all right? So basically it started uh, in uh, end of 2019. So uh, the LEDAS, basically the LEDAS module uh, was developed by six uh, FYP students and one master student. Um, uh, we basically follow the normal SDLC, software development life cycle. So we uh, do um, the elicitation, the requirements elicitation uh, from Ruina because uh, this uh, survey, they have uh, some, of, some of the survey, assessment survey, it uh, requires complex uh, calculation. For the MCHAT, it's uh, very straightforward. It has, it has the weightage and so on, so the normal calculation. But in terms of the Denver and also the SM5, it's very complex. So we uh, do uh, requirements elicitation from the Ruina uh, to, to, to clarify on the process of the calculation. And then we also um, uh, do the flow chart, um, the, the, the flow of the systems to understand better yeah? the flow of the systems and so on. 
And after that, after that we do the interface uh, and database design. And then uh, for the FYP students that uh, during that time in 2020, um, uh, they already finished, but not complete the integration yet. So it's uh, continued by uh, our student also uh, did the internship in PSLC, uh, Brother Arif. So Brother Arif is responsible to touch up uh, the modules, yeah, uh, and then do the module integration, uh, testing, and then uh, do the deployment, right? And this system basically uh, was launched in February 2021, uh, and as of now, uh, it has um, uh, it have uh, it has more than uh, 800 patients uh, have already registered in the system. All right. So basically, this is um, uh, the brand net, and also the process uh, has been taken to uh, to to develop this uh, brand net. All right. That's all. Uh, I think, uh, brother Ayub. Thank you. Right, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Nor Azura. Uh, we are almost at the end of our uh, uh, session. Okay. Um, we, we, so far, we know about BrainNet and we know about IIUM Penawa Mice Lab. Uh, perhaps Dr. Muna Azudin can uh, quickly uh, share with us what is the motivation behind the development of. IIUM Penawa Dyslexia Lab, and maybe uh, you, uh, she can, you can share with, uh, what are the challenges that you have faced to develop the IIUM Penawa Dyslexia Lab. Dr. Muna? Okay, Assalamualaikum. Waalaikum salam. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Okay, thank you, Brother Ayub, for the questions. Okay. So uh, actually, um, okay, the idea of the development uh, IUM Panama Dyslexia Lab, okay, I call it as IPDL, lah, okay, to make it short, okay. So the idea of the IPDL actually come from the Panama itself, lah, okay. Uh, okay, uh, as you can see from uh, what uh, Ms. Rina just presented just now, okay, it shows that uh, the number of uh, learning disability children in Malaysia, okay, in the year of uh, 2019, so it's quite worrisome, worrisome okay? Uh, it's qu uh, quite a lot of students, okay, uh, that is having a learning disability. And uh, this disability is actually a lifelong disability. And uh, moreover, okay, uh, what you can see, I mean, what we have experienced, okay, started from the last year, okay, the schools have been closed for quite some time. So it become a, a concern among the parents that their children, or for example, like okay, pre-school uh, children, okay, and standard one, okay, until standard three, students, okay, still fail to read, or we call it as buta buta huruf, eh, in Malaysia. So uh, with this delay in progress, okay, so it may affect the children learning development, and uh, with the therapy session, okay, uh, will be the best uh, methods, okay, uh, that can help the children to improve. To improve their learning. Okay, so I will be uh, touching a bit uh, called a general, okay, about the IPDL, okay, uh, not uh, a bit, I mean, not, not detail, lah, okay, about IPDL. So uh, the objective of uh, developing a uh, dyslexia lab, okay, actually the first one would be to provide computer assisted uh, technology, we call uh, as CAT, okay, for learning disability children. So uh, actually, our focus is not only for the dyslexia, dyslexia children, but uh, to the children who are facing difficulties or disability in learning. Okay, for example, like a speech delay, dyscalculia, or uh, autism, lah. Okay, and uh, another uh, objective is to provide a platform, okay, for research, okay, uh, in this domain. Okay, and then. Um, Okay, there are a lot of uh, parties okay, that can benefit uh, from the development of uh, IPDL. Okay, for example, like okay, the therapies. Okay, the first one would be the therapies. Lah. Okay, because the, app, uh, the apps is a tool okay, to assist the therapist during the therapy session. Okay, um, before this, okay, uh, the therapies uh, will be using the conventional method lah, okay, during the therapy session. Uh, but but then right now we develop a uh, we call uh, intervention multimedia intervention okay to assist the therapist. So uh, currently we have uh, only uh, one application uh, called as Mari Membaca, okay, uh, and the application was developed by the KICT final year students, okay, and um, inshallah okay uh, we will have uh, one more application okay uh, which is under the the development okay to be used for this calculia. Okay, and uh, dyscalculia is uh, the children who have uh, mathematics uh, learning disorder. Okay, 
And then uh, the second uh, parties that uh, can benefit from the IPDL is the children itself, lah, okay, or the patient. Okay, uh, they are the direct users of the apps. Okay, uh, the apps allow the children to have better learning engagement. Okay, so as we know, you know, the children nowadays, okay, they learn, they play, okay, they even socialize, okay, using mobile apps. Okay, so they are indeed better than us when it comes to the technology. So um, when we first introduce uh, the apps to the children, so they seem to be, you know, very motivated to learn. Okay, learning using mobile mobile apps. Yeah, it's quite interesting to them. And um, another group that indirectly gain from the uh, from the IPDL is the parents. Lah, okay, uh, they can see that uh, their children' uh, learning progress, uh, you know, becomes better. And then the third uh, parties that gain from the IPDL would be the researchers. Okay, uh, to provide a platform. Okay, to conduct research and learn about uh, you know designing. Okay, for uh, learning disability children. Okay, uh, and in general focuses on the human centered design. So I'm from the perspective and sentiment computing research uh, unit. Okay, so this would be a, a great platform. Okay, to learn about designing uh, and human or user experience. Okay, for us to create uh, a usable and useful apps. Okay, for the users. And um, the other parties that also benefit from this is uh, other institutions, for example, like education. Uh, because we provide a platform. Okay, to assist uh, the children who have problem in learning. And then, uh, because you know, uh, children, uh, you know, they still have chances, okay, to improve their learning, okay, through the therapy sessions, okay. Uh, and then, um, in terms of the challenges, okay, well, um, it's not about the challenges actually, but it's a rather of a process that we um, experience, okay, to develop the uh, IPDL, okay. Um, the first one will be to set up the lab. Okay, uh, we, uh, we have uh, several discussions with the Panawa, okay, uh, about the design of the lab, okay, because the lab uh, should be designed uh, carefully, okay, to fit the use, uh, you know, uh, to fit the use of the children, and then uh, will be, I mean, very beneficial, okay, especially during the therapy session. Okay, and then the lab is still under uh, development, okay, uh, because, you know, we, uh, we experience, uh, you know, quite a hurdles right now. Okay, with the pandemic, uh, but the therapy session is already open for the children, okay? And then uh, another one would be the apps or the computer-assisted technology development because to develop the apps, we depend on the final year student uh, and it, you know, takes like uh, two semesters, okay, to develop the apps. And after that, we still need time to improve uh, the apps, lah, okay? So it takes time to produce uh, the apps, okay? Uh, and then um, what we find out that, you know, uh, we did, um, you know, uh, some screening, okay, with uh, parents and patients, okay, the children, okay? We found out that, okay, we need more apps, okay? And uh, we need to improve the, you know, the current contents of apps, okay, to fit the children learning progress lah. But then, yeah, there are lots of things to do. So we need to take, uh, you know, one step at a time. So now um, we are still in the development mode, okay? Uh, we haven't started our research yet, lah, okay? Uh, so inshallah, okay, after everything is settled, uh, yeah, uh, we will start on our research and uh, to have more apps, lah, inshallah. Uh, I think that's all good from me, okay? All right, thank you, Dr. Mona. Okay. Uh, it looks like uh, we are uh, at the end of our uh, session by the panelists, uh, perhaps maybe if there is uh, some questions uh, uh, by the audience to ask any of the uh, panels panelists. Okay, uh, uh, Mr. Swazlan. Okay, do you have questions? Yeah, assalamualaikum. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. We can hear you. Okay. So I'm Suazlan uh, from engineering, but I'm going to ask this question as a uh, capacity as uh, a father of uh, autism, autistic child. I have one autistic child. And so have a lot of my friends in IIUM got uh, disability kids like uh, autism and so dyslexia. So how can us, uh, we as a family again, in IUM family can benefit from, from your research? I know that this is a partnership with the Penawa, 
but how can we benefit from research? Is it the uh, I mean the software that you've mentioned can can be accessed by us because uh, young lecturers may got many kids and then uh, we also have like uh, got uh, a question like, from our juniors like they suspect their kids we got autism straight so we didn't know how to actually uh, help because this is like person person by person is very unique uh, case eh? so how can we benefit from this thank you Perhaps I will answer first. Okay, maybe uh, Miss Ruina will add on uh, later. Okay, so uh, from this research, actually, uh, we you can uh, come uh, to uh, Penawar Special Learning Center, Taman Melawati, Kuala Lumpur. Okay, either you can get uh, the uh, first assessment. Okay, pre-screening first. Pre-screening with the team uh, from the brain net first, and then goes to the your your sons or your daughter or your your children is having autism, right? Yeah, but okay. mine is already because I've got all these assessments. Ah. Uh, therapy. So you you meaning that we have to be the patient of Nawa. Not not like benefiting for the research from the IIM platform. Mm. Do you mean like that? We have to be patient of Nawa. Uh, okay. Maybe uh okay uh, from this uh from the research itself. Okay, from the research study. So we have done a few research study. For example, for brain uh so MindSlap, we did uh, some uh, early detection for the uh, autism, ADHD, and learning disab uh, any learning disabilities like ADHD, autism, and also uh, dyslexia. So for that one, uh, you can come uh, to to have the uh, the assessment there. Okay. So any other uh, intervention intervention, you can also come forward to have uh, the uh, the session with the therapist and and so on and so forth. And the other uh, best part is actually uh, this is still uh, in 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 discussion with Dr Adnan. We have ten percent discount for any of the charges if if we have charges for the uh, the services that have been. Uh, uh, provided by the Penawa Hospital or Penawa Special Learning Center. Okay, so perhaps Ms. Rina will add on more? Yeah. Uh, uh. Yes. Okay, thank you, sir, for the questions. So I think because for your your child is confirmed diagnosed by autism spectrum, with autism spectrum disorder, isn't it? So I think with a uh, mind slap or EEG, it will help you to know the progress of your kids, whether it's very good progress or it regress. Because if uh, through the therapy session, we can manage or we can measure by uh, using EEG, okay, to know whether the treatment planning or the treatment implementation working or not. So I think EEG might help your 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 child as well. And um, if your child is having problem in terms of uh, education part or learning, a, a for example uh, reading or spelling, dyscalculia or no dyslexia apps might be helpful for you. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, thank you, thank you, Miss Rina and uh, Dr. Yeah. Nasir. Uh, I apologize. Uh, we have to cut out uh, uh, right now. Uh, perhaps if uh, you have any further question, uh, you can just uh, type in the chat box. Maybe we can uh, refer to it later, and uh, we can get back to you uh, later because we have another sessions waiting for us. Uh, I apologize for any shortcomings. Um, can, uh, Okay, before we end, can we have uh, all our uh, videos turned on because we are going to have a kind of uh, group photo, just a screenshot, everyone, just a short uh, uh, photo session, a bit. Okay. Okay, ready or not, uh, smile. It is uh, one more, page two. Okay, ready? Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, hopefully, we can um, uh, have another uh, session, another uh, uh, longer session. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, for this, uh, I end the session with Tasbih Kifarah and Suratul As.
Okay, thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Bye-bye.